Much like Franco Harris's immaculate reception in the 1972 NFL playoffs, the truth of Jawan James' barehanded grab on July 14th of 2012 may never be known. No, it was not an indisputable catch, but everyone who saw it can agree that it was indisputably amazing. Well, when you're fortunate to do as many games as I have, you see some tremendous defensive plays along the way. Eric Valence catching Pete Zamora's perfect game. Remember Brian Harris turning an incredible double play in Bowie. But the best play I've seen is Jawan James climbing the wall in left center field, becoming one of the top plays on ESPN Sports Center. So Jawan, obviously, a tremendous center fielder. Um, you know, it was a ball that uh, in this ballpark you thought, you know, had a chance to be gone. And the next thing you know, uh, Jawan kind of comes out of nowhere, leaps up. Uh, and catches that ball. I was watching on the TV in the clubhouse and there were some relievers in, in the uh, clubhouse at that time and everyone was just kind of like looking at each other like, did he actually just catch that ball? You see him go up and he comes down and you didn't know where the ball was. You couldn't see where the ball was. Didn't have his glove, caught it barehanded. Just an incredible athletic play to be able to climb the wall and barehanded make that catch, a play you'll never forget. That's how good it was by Jawan James. When James came back down, his hat was on the ground, the ball was in his throwing hand, and his glove had left the field, slipping off his hand and over the outfield wall. His glove went over the fence. The ball didn't. He somehow caught it. He came down, his glove again, you know, had, had disappeared. Came down pretty hard on his back and then had ball to be there. It was just, that was absolutely pretty amazing. We had a trampoline um, behind the wall from the All-Star Classic, still in the Home Run Derby. There was a fan in the pub area, which was right, right before he caught it, who hopped down onto the trampoline, jumped, uh, picked up his glove, threw it over the wall and then got back on the trampoline and jumped back into the, the pub air. Um, unbeknownst to him, there were stairs to the pub, but I think he saw the opportunity present itself in the trampoline. Uses the trampoline to his advantage, gets to the glove, and just tosses it over the fence, ready to play some more baseball. <laughs> the play drew national attention. Just in the age of social media and everything, one of our first probably plays that went viral, as they would say. Sunday morning, they were all in early and we had ESPN on and Everyone was sitting around the TV and Jawan's just kind of sitting there watching, watching it, eating his cereal and it, they go on and everyone's cheering. Uh, I talked to Dusty Wathen about it and Dusty's dad is a, a long time you know, member of the, of, of the Kansas City Royals and he's still in, in an advisory capacity with them and he was in Kansas City's clubhouse the following day, which I believe was a Sunday day game. So he's in Kansas City's clubhouse and it came on SportsCenter and the Royals players were around the TV saying you got to see this for winding and everything else watching it over and over again just amazed by the catch and, and cheering in uh, you know in, in the big league Kansas City Royals clubhouse you know obviously got a lot of play uh, ESPN and a bunch of different news networks so uh, it was it was fun to watch fun for most people anyway so we had a couple um, interns a very good intern crew that that year and occasionally I give them a little task of coming up with a new stencil or something that we can use on the field and uh, sometimes when there's a TV game we'll put some sort of stencil in the back of the, the pitcher's mouth and one of the interns wanted to make that stencil look like a pagoda. Sprayed it on the back of the mound, got back in my office, watched the center field camera look and I said that looks horrible. It just looks like a block. Well then Juwan James makes his catch and now we're on ESPN every 20 minutes, half hour in the morning and the first shot of that clip is the back of the mound. And I cringed every time, every half hour. Well, the next day I was cringing. Truly an unforgettable moment for everyone at the ballpark that night. But the question lingers, did he catch it in the air or trap it against the outfield wall? You had Mike Wilbon and Tony Kornheiser debating about the play throughout the week on Pardon the Interruption. There are still some people to this day who say there's no way he caught the ball. I don't know whether he caught it or not, but I know the umpire said it was a catch. Everybody here says he caught it. I think everybody wants to believe that he caught it. I don't, I don't believe he did. I saw some replays, and I believe he trapped the ball against the wall. I checked my scorecard. Around my scorecard, it says he caught it. I remember people asking, like, do you, like, remember, like, catching the ball? And he's like, I just remember jumping up and landing and looking, and the ball was in my hand. He's like, I don't really remember, like, any of the details. He's like, I, I, I honestly, I don't remember. He's like... It was all a blur to me. Even trapping it was a great play on his part. I'll give him credit for that. Even if it wasn't a, a totally legit legal play, it was still a, a great play on his part to come, come down with the ball and to sell it. I'd say he caught it. I, I, he told me he caught it. <laughs>
Yeah. They called him out, so he caught it, right? It doesn't matter now. He caught it. I, I don't think uh, we didn't have a very good, I mean, the camera angle to, to be able to tell if he did or not, but uh, uh, he says he caught it, so I'd say he caught it. Jawan James' unbelievable catch, another of Redding's many golden moments.